guys, Kevin here. Uh, happy quarantine. <laughs> it's definitely an unfortunate situation, but let's try and make the best of it. So I want to talk about something that I've kind of come across um, for the past few months or so. Um, I think I'm tired on, tired of not liking Yeezys anymore. Like I know like w we've all been through this sort of cycle, I I at least people when um, they initially joined the sneaker game where you would really like Yeezys and Yeezys used to be something very, very highly coveted and then now it's become a little bit easier. But I think I've almost come for a full circle um, where I think I want to wear Yeezys again. And I know that it's kind of like weird that it's like, huh, like you're wearing Yeezys again? Um, I mean, because also it's like so easy for people to just be like, oh, they're playing out the 350 B2s, it's terrible. But if you look at Jordan brand and Jordan 1s, they have Jordan high OGs, mids, lows, and different types of mids, different types of highs, so many different materials and like all that other stuff. Um, and people still gobble it all up. Most of the time, there's only a handful of like models where it's like super, super ugly colorways that end up sitting in like larger sizes. Um, but usually the smaller sizes are gone like that. With Yeezys, I think Yeezy really encapsulates something interesting where it's like the, the Nike Air Jordan or the Adidas Air Jordan 1 equivalent sort of, I guess I would say, where it's a very easy, clean model to wear. It's a very open model to wear. But before I go further into that, let's go a little bit back in time, uh, back when Yeezys, Yeezys first came out. Back in 09, that's when Kanye West became one of the only individuals outside of athletics to get their own signature sneaker named the Air Yeezy. It came in three different colors, Blink, which is their black pink model, the Zen Gray, as well as the Net Net. Uh, the retail was 250 but adjusted to inflation, it came out to being $309. These were absolutely amazing, unique sneakers that coincided very perfectly with the Glow in the Dark tour that went on. And it utilized the Glow in the Dark sole that the Air Yeezy ones had and that subsequent Air Yeezys would follow. Sneakers were not very mainstream in 09, but it definitely has a dedicated niche following with many lineups throughout the world. But Kanye's sneakers were an absolute hit, and everyone within the community like relatively liked the shoes. Now fast forward to 2012, Kanye and Nike came together to release the Air Yeezy 2, which released near the Watch the Throne slash Yeezus era. His second Nike sneaker was an absolutely explosive hit um, this time, and this was sort of the period when people started to get into reselling shoes for like a profit or like a business. This sort of changed the dynamic of what sneakers became because it became very linked to their monetary value as well as their perceived uh, wealth. His relationship with Nike was soured by the end of the Red October run uh, and Nike would lose one of their biggest creatives in the field and go to their competitor, Adidas. Yeah. You know, if I see something, I see an opportunity, I'm gonna go for it. I'm here to crack the pavement and make new grounds, you know, sonically and in society, culturally. We're not always in the position that we want to be at. We're, we're constantly growing, we're constantly making mistakes. We're constantly trying to express ourselves and trying to actualize our dreams. I want to create something better for you. We have been limited. It, it, it's bigger than, you know, who I am, even in this, you know, in my, my presence living. It's about, you know, when I was on earth, what did I do to help? I want people to think more. I want people to feel like it's okay to create and follow what their dreams are and not feel boxed in. I want people to feel like awesome is possible. There's a lack of creativity in every field because people are afraid. In 2015, the Adidas era is sort of like the modern era of kind of Yeezys, I would say. Um, which brought us many new models, ideas, perspectives, and silhouettes. I think something very decisive happened in 2018 though, when Yeezy started to be very widely available. The V1s were still relatively hard to find, hard to get, you know, there was still a lot of craze around it because this was 
Kanye's first entryway into the Adidas footwear, as well as it's a new silhouette, it's a new sort of look uh, for Adidas. But, like, but in 2018, that's when the democratization of design, of technology, really came through. And this sort of democratization really kind of brought forth either the downfall of people who utilize Yeezys as just a way to, I guess, flex or show off how much money they have, and increasing the freedom and the liberation that sort of the democratization of like prime knit, of, um, of Adidas Boost, of all those other technologies came to be. Because uh, Kanye really did want everybody who wanted to have Yeezys to have Yeezys. Whether that be through the multiple Yeezy 350s or the 700s that even eventually went on sale to the power phases um, to a variety of other Yeezy slides. So everybody who could have, could want Yeezys could eventually get Yeezys as well as there wasn't so much of a limited demand and everybody's telling them to like make Yeezys less available and um, to drive up the hype, to bring the energy back, but I don't necessarily think that's the right way to go about it. I think good design, by the end of the day, will stand the test of time. So now, kind of coming back to my perspective right now, like I've basically um, had Yeezys since my entire time that I sort of knew about sneakers. Um, like I had the Air Yeezy ones, they're not in my rotation anymore, had the Yeezy 2s, etc. Uh, so I've always like coveted Yeezys to a certain degree, but I think when the Adidas Yeezys came out, specifically the V2s, um, the V2s was when, you know, it started to look a little bit weird in my opinion, because like a lot of people weren't dressing them very well, as well as it's this weird thing where like you can have that like perceived wealth, but if people just absolutely like brick a fit, it just makes the Yeezys look absolutely terrible. For lack of a better word, it like sours the taste in your mouth, I guess I would say. Um, for people who just have whack ass fits with these Yeezys on. So then that like kind of looks bad on the shoe, I guess I would say. At least from like a perceived vision. Cause you see all these celebs and all these influencers wearing, you know, certain shoes that they get seated and they can style it well, well or some um, uh, some stylists get seated it and vice versa so they're able to style it very tastefully while well, if you democratize it there's a higher chance of breaking fits. So I think that's sort of like the give and take and the ebb and flow of it. So I think I've really come around full circle and I think I've started to really appreciate Yeezys for what they are and how they really put forth like a new sort of design language um, and I know a lot of people are going to say no, you know, like Nike had the Roche Run and there are plenty of other ones, but I think this silhouette in itself is just such a unique silhouette that you don't need even the Adidas branding because this silhouette in itself just encapsulates like easy. Um, well, while like, you know, um, for example, like the Union Air Jordan 1 Storm Blues, like this almost needs that Nike swoosh, almost needs that Air Jordan logo. Not saying that these are a lesser shoe than this, but it's just sort of a masterful play on how one design really utilizes that branding in like a, a very key way, while, you know, some other shoes might just have, you know, this, and then you know what this is. This is a Reebok, it has Reebok like literally everywhere as well as the Jound and the normal versions have just Reebok written over here. While the Yeezys, it's the silhouette that is easy. Like this, undoubtedly, the design is easy, but you don't see three stripes pretty much anywhere. It's such a clean, minimal design, as well as I think there is something luxurious with not having branding on almost anything. And yes, there are subtle hints, such as like the 3M in here, as well as uh, the bottom here has Boost written on there, as well as the insole has Adidas on it. Um, but I think there is something luxurious and something um, that you can really kind of have confidence in the design if you don't have to put branding on it. If you can keep it as minimal as you can and still have people recognize it, then you get an iconic sneaker. As well as I would say that this is definitely more comfortable than a lot of the retro basketball running sneakers. Um, that are out there that are people continually retro, retro, retro. 
Um, and I think there is something nice and something to be said about this silhouette and how um, this works very well with slimmer fitting pants. And I think there is a potential for wearing this with more looser fitting pants as well. I know people say that, you know, like one piece knit shoes are, um, are a thing of the past as well as like, you know, um, shoes, um, you know, with leather panels, with chunky sneakers, those ones are in while the slim fitting shoes are out. But like, again, fashion goes in a cycle. I think this is definitely going to be coming back and I think this is an iconic and well-made silhouette. So I think I've come full circle where I loved Yeezy and then I sort of didn't like Yeezy, sort of detested Yeezy, um, I didn't really like what they were doing and then I've come back into, you know, appreciating Yeezy, not necessarily from a height perspective, but from like a design perspective, design language perspective, as well as I just respect the hustle, you know, like who else can go against, you know, the grain and really push for like a new idea, a new perspective other than Kanye. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that's sort of like my argument for Ye for wearing Yeezys again, whether or not that argument was needed. Um, that's whatever. Thank you for watching my video um, and I will talk to you guys next time. Peace.